Have you ever wondered why we bother to classify celestial objects in the sky into different categories? Classifying celestial objects such as stars, galaxies, and quasars help astronomers map the night sky and understand how these objects form and evolve. It could even help them identify which celestial objects may be habitable. In this tutorial, we will be showing you how to create and adjust a boosted tree model to classify stars, galaxies, and quasars. To access the full instructions and Google Colab notebook for this project, check out the project page linked in the description below. To download the files you'll be needing for this project, you want to scroll all the way down here to setting up the Google Colab environment and download the stellar classification.ipyynb file and the stellar underscore data.csv file. Then you want to navigate to your My Drive, create a folder called stellar classification and then upload both the IPONB file and the CSV file. Then to open the notebook, you can just double click on this IPONB file. If you've never used Google Colab before, Google Colab is a platform where you can write, run, and share code. To run a cell, you can click on this play button here, or you can click on the cell and hold Control Enter on your keyboard, or Command Enter if you're on a MacBook. To add a cell block, you can click on this button here, and to delete it, you can click on this trash icon over here. Now, let's get started with the project. To start, we'll be importing the libraries that we'll be needing for this project. We do this so that we can use functions that other people have already created. Then, we'll mount our Google Drive. This is so we can use the data from the CSV file we uploaded earlier. Now, we'll load the data into a pandas data frame. We can see the data populated here. And this is the column that we'll be predicting, called class. For a more in-depth explanation for what each of these columns mean, check out the Kaggle page for this dataset, which is also linked in the project page. Now, we'll start pre-processing the dataset by label encoding. Machine learning algorithms work better with numbers than words, so that's why we'll be converting these words into numbers. If you want to see the unique values for the class column, before we pre-process it, you can add a code block, type in df, which is our data frame, and then class, which is the column we want to see, and then dot unique, and then run the code block. And we can see the unique values for this column is galaxy, QSO, which stands for quasar, and star. And after we run this code block, we can now see that galaxy corresponds to zero, Quasar corresponds to 2, and star corresponds to 1. Next, we'll be getting rid of outliers. In space data, there's a lot of potential for outliers, and we'll be using a method called local outlier factor to get rid of our outliers. To learn more about what causes outliers in space data, as well as the local outlier factor method, make sure to check out the project page linked in the description. Now, just run this code block and this one. As you can see, 15,256 is the number of outliers that this algorithm has found. You can make this number even smaller, like this, so that we get less outliers. Or you can make the number bigger, like negative 1, to classify even more outliers. Either way, make sure this number is negative 1 or smaller. For now, I'll just leave it at negative 1.5. This next code block simply removes the outliers from our data frame. Next, we'll be performing feature selection. As we recall our data from earlier, and we can see that there are a lot of columns. Sometimes not all of these columns are necessary for our task. So we can perform feature selection to determine which columns are the most helpful in helping us identify the class or the celestial object. Now, if we run this code block, this will display a heat map of the different columns. Here, we can see which columns are the most highly correlated with each other. A value closer to 1 means they are very correlated with each other. A value closer to negative 1 means they are negatively correlated with each other. And a value closer to 0 means that they are not very closely correlated. We can see here that there is a dark diagonal line of all 1s, and that is because each column is correlated to itself. For example, object ID, object ID, and an alpha, and alpha, and so on. We can see there's missing values here for rerun ID. So let's check the values of rerun ID to see what's going on. 
and we can see that there's only ever one value for rerun ID, which is 301. And there's no point in keeping a column where the value never changes. So we can keep that in mind and drop that column later. Now take some time to examine this heat map and think about which columns might be repetitive. For example, it looks like plate and spec object ID have an exactly one-to-one -one correlation. That means it might be repetitive to keep both of these columns when running your machine learning algorithm. Look into what the column names mean and decide to either drop or keep them. We could also create a correlation matrix in this code block. These values are how closely related each column is to the class, which was the star, quasar, and galaxy that we were trying to classify earlier. Now take a look at these values and decide which columns to keep. For more advice of which columns to keep, check out the project page. But a quick tip for now is to choose the columns that are as far away from the value 0 as possible. In this next code block, you will decide what you want to drop. So for example, let's add the rerun ID from earlier. After examining this table and this table from earlier, decide which columns you would like to drop. Now we'll learn how to handle the imbalanced data. First, run this code block to see what I mean by imbalanced data. Remember that we label encoded the class earlier. So zero is galaxy, one is star, and two is quasar. We can see that in our data set, there are a lot more galaxies than there are stars or quasars. We want to have a balanced data set if possible. That is because when the model trains, it may become very good at classifying the majority class and not so good at classifying the minority classes. We'll then separate the x from our y. We can see that x is all of the columns except for the class column, which is y. Remember that y is the class we are predicting, which is the star, quasar, and galaxy we'll be classifying. Then we'll be using a method called SMOT, which stands for Synthetic Minority Oversampling Technique. You can learn more about how this algorithm works in the project page. For now, just know that it artificially creates more samples from the minority classes. And if we run this code block, we can now see that there is an even amount of each class. The last step in pre-processing our data will be data scaling. This puts all variables on the same scale so that the machine learning algorithm can learn easier. Next, we'll split our data into train and test. And if we run this code block, this first number means how many samples are in our train data. And the second number is how many columns you decided to keep. Because we are only predicting one column, that is why the Y train doesn't have any number after the number of samples. And here we can see that about 80% of the data was used for training and 20% was used for the testing. Now it is time to create and train our model. Here there are a few parameters you can adjust as well, including learning rate, max depth, and n estimators. You can learn more about these parameters on the project page. We can see the accuracy down here, which mine was about 98%. We'll now go over other metrics for evaluating our model. Run this code block to create a confusion matrix. In this diagonal line, these are the total number of samples that are classified correctly. For example, these are the number of galaxies that were accurately predicted as galaxies. These are the number of stars that are correctly predicted as stars and quasars as quasars. For these yellow and white boxes, this is the number of stars that were accidentally classified as galaxies, quasars that were accidentally classified as galaxies, and so on. This next code block will print out the classification report. We'll see the precision, recall, F1 score, and support for each of the three classes, and then the accuracy, macro average, and weighted average across the whole dataset. You can learn more about these metrics on the project page. You can run this code block to create the ROC AUC curve. You can also learn more about the ROC and AUC curve on the project page. But since the AOC for each of these classes is 1, it seems to be a pretty good model. Finally, this last code block will create a class prediction error graph. Here, we can more easily see which classes were mistaken for each other. We can see that some quasars are mistaken for galaxies, some galaxies are mistaken for quasars, and the model doesn't really mistake star for any other class. Adjust the parameters we discussed earlier to see how that affects how the model classifies each class. Remember that you can adjust the threshold under code block 2c 
which columns to drop under code block 2G, the learning rate, max depth, and end estimators under code block 4A. This is also where you can find the overall accuracy of your model. Whenever you adjust something and you want to test out your new model, make sure to go to runtime and then run all. And with that, we reached the end of this coding tutorial. Remember that you can find written instructions as well as the dataset and notebook for this project linked in the description below. And for a thousand other projects for all areas of science and engineering, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.